Real true story about my brother, cousins, and I. Pre-teens. The report says my dad, your grandpa, died outside, but my sister said he died inside. He did die inside. There's proof. We're on the car boat. We're having fun. Oh, we're on the road now. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, now it's transforming to a plane. <laughs> you cool, bro? Woo! Did you know this place is haunted? This is what your grandparents used to say. Mom, the bowl fell down and broke. There's no broken bowl. There's only one generator for the kitchen. Then who was that guy in here? Yeah. We didn't see no guy in here. Do us a favor and play outside. How many of you seen the light on in the shed? I have. Let's check it out. The bulb is blown out. I don't see a light bulb. When we started school, like you can see in this map, in one of the bus stops, on the bottom right where the bus is at, where we could be dropped off early and have a longer walk home, or have a longer ride and have a shorter walk home. So I tried to strategize this by finding out who would make it home first. I was dropped off in the longer walk, and my brother was dropped off in the shorter walk. And for some strange reason, he got home first. But I wasn't quite convinced. Then I told my brother, let's do the opposite. And the next day we did. As I rode to the last bus stop, me and this guy got off the bus. And this guy wound up being a typical bully by saying, Don't eat tomorrow, only give me your lunch money. Then we went our separate ways only to find out why my brother was getting home first. He wasn't walking, he was running home. And I told my brother about the bully and he said he had the same problem. Then I told him in that case we'll just get off early and have a longer walk home. But if he does get off with us, he's only one bully and we could gang up on him. And the next thing we got off early and so did the bully asking, You two, where's my lunch money? Then I snap and I picked up the metal garbage lid. He he took off running as I threw it at him. But I missed, but at least he knew we were serious enough not to play that game. By the fourth day of us getting off the bus, this is what happened. The big guy said, I heard you was picking on my brother. And I said, he was trying to pick on us to get our lunch money. He said, I don't care if I hear you picking on my brother again, I'm going to beat the both of you up myself. At the fifth day, I got off the bus and so did the bully. My brother noticed it and decided to stay in the bus until he got dropped off later. When I wasn't noticing, he went home to grab his bike to chase me down with it. Then I ran up to this rich person's looking house. When I was banging on the door, I said, help me. He said, why are you trying to be so loud? I said, you trying to get money out of me that I don't have to give because I don't get lunch money. And then he rode off, but I was sure glad I didn't tell him about our lunch tickets. And then we moved yet again. And when my mom started dating a few times, she finally made up with this guy that was going to soon be our stepdad. My mom wanted more quality time with him, so she signed me up for Cub Scouts. The Cub Scouts leader showed us our cabin. And with me that pays no attention and don't have no sense of direction, that's a bad combination. So I got mixed up by one group after another. Hey, you don't belong to my group. I suggest you go to your own. And then I got lost. And when I seen the light upstairs, I thought it was a good thing, so I went up. And when I looked through this glass lining doors, I was noticing older kids in there, and it was Boy Scouts, and I was hoping they helped me out. And as they was leaving, I noticed two guys noticed me. The white guy ran and quickly opened the sliding doors, knocked me down, and the guy grabbed my throat and tried to push me off the edge while I grabbed onto the, the railings of the balcony where I seen a lot of broken furniture down there. And like I said, I always get away with killing people. And this black friend said, how come you always gotta kill people you meet? Let this one go. And he did. And I've been nervous about heights ever since. Instructor helped bring me back. The next morning I noticed I was being stalked by the same guy. Paying attention to this, I wound up being lost again. He came chasing me so I ran off trying to zigzag through the buildings to lose him. At this point I found a building with an indoor pool. And I always wanted to jump off the highest diving board. Even though I was worried about heights, I built up the courage to go to the last minute before everybody left. After I seen people started to leave, I jumped. As soon as I hit the bottom, I used my feet and legs to push me up. That's when I realized I made a mistake because that stalking bully killer was there. I've got you now. As I was swimming away, I heard him running. He was right in front of me, saying, You gotta come out sometime. Face it, no matter where you go, I'm gonna be right there. And I quickly thought I was a good underwater swimmer and I didn't think he would see me, but he did. And because of panic, I wasn't thinking right. When I was getting up to get out and breathe, he was using his hand or hands to push me down to drown me. I was thinking, I'm a good underwater swimmer, so I swam down deeper. As soon as I got up from the middle, there's a lifeguard checking and locking the place down. As soon as he heard this, he tried to leave, but she caught him saying, what are you doing in here? And he said, I was telling the other guy that he shouldn't be swimming near, he needs to get out. And then I left. And I finally got home and my mom asked, how did it go? And I only gave her a mean look. All this happened in the late 70s, early 80s. Even though I wasn't a Christian back then, I give God the credit to make me a survivor. 
I'm sure I'm not the only one. After the sins of my dad, we have to learn to live poorly. We lived in a black neighborhood, even though we didn't know what that means. We didn't even know what uh, male and female meant back then. We were so young. Even though we wasn't prejudiced, the blacks was racist against us. And this is what happened when we went out for our walk back in the 70s. Get them! They're white! Not really understanding what was going on, we really had to learn fast that they didn't like white people. So we quickly run away in a panic. As they was trying to beat down the door, when we was all holding the door so they won't break it down, she was calling the cops. When the police were too scared to do anything about it by not even leaving their cars, we learned fast that they wasn't going to help us. After the police left, the blacks finally got tired and left. The next day, my brother went outside alone. I witnessed how they put my brother in the tricycle and rolled him down the steps with it. My brother got scared and hid in the bushes, and that's when they ganged up on him. I grabbed them to run home with them, and that's when they ganged up on the both of us. We fought back the best we could and still lost, but we managed to escape. And it was the first time my brother and I learned how to fight back in Freehold, New Jersey. Next, our family moved into this poor white neighborhood thinking it would be much better. The apartment we lived in was in the front near the streets and the playground was way in the back of the apartments. We was told we could play in it since we live at these apartments. As my brother and I went to play in the playground, we noticed it was all free for us. I didn't know why and my brother didn't care. And while we was having fun, we noticed all the kids was looking at us through the apartments. And that's when we found out why why they didn't come down to play and that's when two bully guys came up and said what are you doing in our playground and I said we was told we we're allowed to play here and the bigger one said where do you live and I said we live in the front of the apartments he said anybody that lives in front of the apartments cannot go in the back of the apartments to play in the playground however my brother kept on swinging on the swings and the guy that's between mine and my brother's size and he grabbed my brother's chain while he was going backwards and knocked the wind out of him where he couldn't hardly breathe then I remembered my mother saying if there's any trouble walk away from it howsoever it did not work because they grabbed us and since we wasn't no strangers and fighting we fought back but the guy bigger than my brother beat him down while the biggest guy beat me down and they said let that teach you a lesson so you'll never come back here again and they were saying that while we was carrying each other back home the next morning my mom was like why don't you two play in the playground again and we told her a short version of two guys kicking us out because they said we didn't belong there she asked how big are these guys as soon as I said I'm bigger than one of them then she said then you could handle it or do you want me to talk to their parents and we said no because we didn't know their parents were troublemakers and when we went outside it gave me an idea what she said I said Jason I got a plan I said while you're fighting the big guy I'll beat the other guy down and I'll help you beat the other guy down and we both thought it was a good plan and when they noticed us they said you didn't learn last time so we're here to teach you another lesson and my plan seemed to be working when I beat the other guy down but as soon as I turned around I noticed my brother was down even though we was weakened by the fight I still tried to fight him anyways and I went down after coming home from fighting we learned our cousins was gonna spend the night because they're in the middle of moving the next day I gave them board games to play after that we played one of their games then one of them said we're getting bored isn't there a playground we could play in I said we don't want to go there then one of them said why not then I said we're tired of being beat then one of them said what do you mean by that then we told what happened then my oldest cousin came up with a plan telling us to go out there first and they'll back us up later as we went out there first I was nervously thinking how's our cousins gonna fight their girls and hoping they didn't set us up to get beat up again and the bullies came out second saying let's beat them again till they learn their lesson thinking I don't like to fight but I will fight if I have to then thankfully my cousins came up next and my oldest cousin said do you got a problem with them and one of them said yes and she said then you got a problem with me when they turned around and saying how big they was they took off running then all of a sudden all the kids came out to play like it should have been played with the next morning our cousins was telling us we almost finished moving and we're gonna be leaving soon so the plan is to do the same thing again so this way they would think that we might be around the next time they try this again and trusting our cousins so we did do what they said and when the other kids seen that we was out there they all came out playing on the playground
playground again. And when the bullies came up, they said, where's your cousins now to protect you all? As soon as our cousins heard that, they came up to the right side of the apartments from us. They took off saying, just check. And the next morning, they said, this is our last day with you two. This time, we're going to wait a little longer to come to the left side of you both. And so we did. And then the rest of them came out to play. And then the bullies, they stayed their distance while they was looking around. He said, where's your cousins now? Well, they quickly turned around and watched out for them. Not see them. They said, I guess your cousins finally left you both. They came out to the right side of us and said, guess again. And they was gone. The next day, the bullies found out that my cousins were truly gone after they looked for a long time. The rest of the kids circle us, chant and fight. I told my brother to make it look good like the last plan we had. But that plan went up working the same way like it did before. The next day, only half of them came out and the others were looking out through their apartments. I told them the plan I told my brother saying, why we must fight alone for you all to play in the playground for we all could get together and gang up on those bullies but they said i don't want to get hurt or go to the hospital or even get punched and then when we seen the bullies coming we all left and we moved again in the early 80s. Started in New Jersey, moved a few times until we got to Florida. And started in the last year, school of Grove Park Elementary. And that's when I met this guy named Jimmy Novick in the fifth grade. Then sometime later on, he told me that he knew how to fight because he had a fight to survive. Then I said, we got that in common. And it took me a whole school week to learn how to get to his apartment through the bus ride. By the weekend, I went to where he lives and he was coming out to take out the trash at that time. And when he seen me, he said, oh, hi David and I was thinking wow what a welcome not really and he went to throw out the trash and he says I'm going to a friend's house to shoot some marbles you could come with me after they got tired of the game they decided for us to go for a walk and when we did so they decided to go out in the woods and play and that's when Jimmy Novick's friend stopped us and said you remember the last time we went out here and a gang chased us out and said next time you come back it won't be that easy for you to get out the next time and Jimmy said yeah but this time we got David and I guess because I was chubby at the time it looked like I could handle myself and I thought they was only trying to scare me to find out how brave I really was and Jimmy said let's find weapons to bring with us and Jimmy found a long whip stick and his friend had stubby stick and I had a regular size stick when we went to the open field I thought they was faking it until we told you what's gonna happen next time you come here. If you try to run away, that's gonna happen to you. And that's when I knew they wasn't lying because they came out of hiding behind the trees and surrounded us by all kinds from preteens throughout older teens. This one guy had a stick wrapped with a, some kind of cloth or a rag with some kind of gas smell to it. And he ignited with a lighter. Until this day, I still remember the heat in the right side of my face. He said, you know how fast hair burns? All of a sudden, we heard these hyper kids on these bicycles. Yeah, let's get them! And since they backed off, I thought this game was going to fight that game. We could sneak out while that's happening. But sadly, the bad thing was they was all in the same gang. And when they were circling us, they stopped to sling around their bikes, picked their wheels up as it was turning. It was flicking dirt in their faces. At the same time, one of them did the same, but I did different. I had a quick reason flexes I grabbed his bike while it was going up I pulled it down he got off his bike and said tough guy huh and he got that shock look when I picked that stick up while he was running away I threw the stick and it was spinning until it hit him twice once in the back of the head and it hit him in the back after he went down I was thinking I threw the only weapon I had so I quickly ran and got my stick while he grabbed his bike and they quickly rode the bikes around us at that time we were standing back to back like a triangle formation the time I turned around me and his friend was seeing what Jim he was doing. He took a skinny whip stick and tried to stick it in the spokes. Snap, crackle, pop. Later, his stick got shredded. His friend used the same idea, but his stubby stick bounced off the spokes. <laughs> And when I did it, it caused a domino effect. The rest of the gang got mad enough and jumped over the bicycle list. And we all started throwing punches, hitting one another. And the only thing we could see is fists everywhere. We didn't know if we accidentally hit each other. Then we realized when you get to the point you fight so hard and long, you finally collapse. In my weakness, they dragged my body into a hole. And what made it worse was these fire ants crawling and biting me. And I used a little bit of energy that I had left to smack them off of me. Then I noticed they covered the hole with tree branches. Then I noticed this guy guarding me with a stick. Then I said, what are you all going to do with my friends? Then he quickly turned around and kicked dirt on my face and said, if I was you, I wouldn't be worried about your friends. 
And when I heard that, I seen a bunch of cars with a bunch of parents saying, I told you not supposed to do this anymore. Get home. Even though more than half of them left, we were still outnumbered. The only thing I was thinking of is get out the fast I can. And when I seen Jimmy's friend tied around the train with some vines, I didn't want to leave him by himself. That's when we seen Jimmy holding a stick and shaking. He told us later on that he was supposed to fight the leader. And they told him if he wins, he could be the new leader. Then he could make a choice if we leave or join the gang. After we got beaten, there was no way he was going to win. But they didn't say what was going to happen if he lost. We grabbed Jimmy from up top the dirt hill and ran away from the gang. While he let go of the stick. As soon as the parents was gone, they turned around and said, Hey, where do they go? Where are they? I don't know. I see them. Right there. Let's go get them. At this point, we was holding each other, and we was moving at a slow pace because we were beat up. And we was trapped, surrounded by hedges, with vines all over them growing potatoes. And the gang was getting caught up to us. At this point, we was arming ourselves with the potatoes and throwing at them to slow them down. When they came closer, Jimmy and his friend climbed the tree. Then the gang was grabbing the potatoes and throwing it back at us. And when I tried to climb the tree, I pulled myself up, but one of them hit me in the left side of my temple. When I tried again, one of them hit me in the left side of my neck. And because of that, I wound up having a lump in my throat throw for a week more or less. When I was feeling like giving up, I told them just to go without me. Jimmy said, no, we're not going to go without you. By that time, they tried to grab my feet and pull me down, but I kept on kicking and dirt was coming off my shoe and into their faces. When they both helped me up in the tree, they jumped down on the other side and said, oh, come on, let's get down here. And I was thinking, I just got up here and I'm worried about the drop. Since I was heavy set, the branch broke and I fell in the other side where my friends was. Then we jumped over the brick fence. And one of the gang members says, Next time you come here, not only won't be easy for you to get out, you might not get out at all. And they didn't come after us like if they got in trouble for being around the apartments from before. And we never went back out there where the evil people was. Later, I had a teacher that was in a bad mood, and I said, she's being a witch. She wrote a referral, and she told me to go to the front office. I seen what she wrote, and I said, I didn't call you the B word. She said, yes, she did, and she turned her back away from me and said, go to the front office. Back then, when you was a senior, you didn't use bad language unless you got angry. So I wrinkled it to a ball and threw it at her back. Then she unwrinkled it and wrote me two more referrals on top of that. The first one saying I cursed her. The second one said I tried to destroy it. And the third one, by saying I punched her in the back, with my fist and that was enough to get me kicked out of school and I went to J.L. Wilkinson and the first day I went there I got mad because Taylor Johnson this tall black guy got finished beating up this small white skinny guy even though the black guy did get in trouble for it now this other teacher that I had was being mean to the students from morning to almost lunchtime at that time this guy named Ike asked me how's the teacher being like and I said she's been a witch then the teacher said I'm writing you a referral and Ike you take them down there and I said for what like the other teacher did she misheard me and I told her that and then when she asked Ike I thought he was gonna be on my side but he was and he said oh you heard right then she wrote me a referral and said okay you two go and I said I'm not going nowhere then she called the front office and told the principal I got a troublemaker here and he won't go to you he said I'll be right down there I'll know how to take care of guys like him a little while later he came in and he says you're coming with me I said no I'm not going nowhere with you he said we're either gonna do it the easy way or the hard way so I grabbed my desk he grabbed me and he yanked me and I fell down with the desk and everybody pointed and laughed at me then I got up he grabbed my arm and forced me out of the classroom as soon as I went out the door I had a bad attitude and I said man just get your hands off me man just get your hands off me he said no unless you know how to walk on your own and I said yeah and as soon as we walked to the office the bell rung a lot of students came for lunch he went to the left side of the students and I ducked down to the right side turned around and looked at him and he couldn't even see me and I ran off as soon as the bell rung and when people were at lunch I went to hide in bathrooms and when the bell rung I hid through the people during lunch change and thought I'm gonna keep this up until I go home and I'm never coming back to school the bell rung I hid in a different bathroom and I kept the doors cracked open so nobody knows I'm hiding in one of the stalls and that's when I heard somebody come in I looked underneath and I noticed it was the principal and he pulled up his pants legs looked down and seen that was nobody there and then he left the bell rung I snuck out again and I heard an announcement saying over the inner Come. We're looking for a guy wearing blue jeans and a blue shirt and light brown hair. After doing that a few times and playing this hide and seek game and lunches was over, I thought I could stall time by being out in the PE field. And one of the PE coaches said, hey, you're the person that they're all looking for. So I ran away and hid in the bathroom again. And finally the bell rung and I hid back in the crowd again. And that's when I noticed they had a policeman looking for me. So that's when I walked off calmly. This way I won't look suspicious. After getting tired of the same routine, I sat down on this railing. And 
then this teacher came out asking me, what are you doing out here? So as an unsaved typical sinner, I lied. I said, I got in trouble with my teacher, and she put me out here for punishment. She told me that was a speech teacher's room. Then I said, that's the teacher I'm talking about. She said, the speech teacher don't come this period. She comes next period, which is the last one. But I know who you are. You're the guy everybody's looking for. And since I was caught, I told the truth and said, yes, I am. And then she told me to stay there and don't go anywhere. And I was thinking, yeah, right, as I was shaking my head, yes. And she said, I mean it now. You stay right where you're at. And when I was shaking my head, yes, I was thinking, yeah, like I'm really going to do what you say. And as soon as she went in the building, I knew she would look out. And that's the real reason why I stayed there before she comes out after me. And as soon as she got done looking, I knew she was going to call the front office. And then I ran away again and hid back in the last stall with my feet on the toilet seat. And that's when the principal came back in, but he was so mad, he didn't bother looking under this time. And that's when I heard at each stall, he was going, wha-bam, 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 kicking each one open until he got to mine. At this point, my leg was cramping up and almost plunged into the toilet. And that's when I heard this janitor come in. And he said, hey, they found your guy. He was last seen in H-Wing. And while they was walking out, I heard him say, this child been a pest to me. And then I thought I couldn't hardly wait to sneak on the bus and go home and quit school. At this point, the bell rung. And I thought, I'm almost there. At that point, the students knew who I was and what I was doing. And one of the guy teachers seen me. I think this is the person you're all looking for. He's right there. And then I ran off where he couldn't see me. And that's when the other students was helping me. They was all pointing in one direction where I went. But I thought they was pointing where I should be going to, not where they was coming from. And the principal with two other grown-ups was there. After they seen me, I zigzagged through the buildings until I lost them. And this time I ran across some same students. And this time they was pointing where I should be running to, but I thought they was pointing where they was coming from. So I ran the opposite way. And when I seen them in front of me, I zigzagged through the buildings yet again. A bunch of grown-up workers were right behind me. And I seen a lot of them right in front of me. And also to the right, and I went to the left. At this point, this dean was running past the buildings, and he caught me into the corner of his eye, and he turned around, and he almost fell down because he's heavy set. And when he was coming after me, I dutched to my right, and he followed me. And when I quickly went to the left, he went to my left. And when he caught up to me, I quickly dutched to my right like I was playing football. And when I went to pass him, he grabbed me, and he only got my shirt. And then he grabbed me, and I went, Aah! And that's when I felt him shake, and he got startled and let go. By that time, when I was running through the buildings, they caught up to me and tackled me and grabbed me while I was saying, Man, just get your hands off me, man. Just get your hands off me. And the principal said, Not this time. So they put me in a room with one of my class students. This police officer said, I don't have time to babysit you two, and he left. And when he did, I asked this other student, What are you in here for? He said, I'm called the copycat, and when you ran off, I did too. And then I asked him, How long did it take before you got caught? He said, I got caught as soon as I got out of the classroom. And the principal came in with my referral saying he's going to give me a whole lot of swats. And I said, for what? I didn't do nothing! Pow! I hit the brick wall and hurt my hand. And because of that, he got me arrested, said I was threatening his life. But later on, the school dropped the charges. And I never received my swats. My mom and stepdad never allowed me to quit school. Later on in middle school, I met this guy named Sean Bear. Even though I was a tough fighter, he was a rough wrestler. He was a psycho for Satan and the rest of the devils. He would talk about satanic things, but I didn't know it because I wasn't a Christian. He would say things like he broke in his female's house and threatened her and said to her to do him some sexual pleasures. And after she did, he murdered her and got in the way with it. And everyone will agree it's against the law. But we got the law originally from the Bible. And that's where we originally got our laws from. Now don't get mad at God for the Bible giving us free will. In Joshua chapter 24 verses 15. But we need to hate sin like God hates sin in Psalms chapter 5 verse 5. Chapter 45 verse 7. Chapter 97 verse 10. And more. He even lied to one of his family members in saying that I prefer men over women. And whenever his mom made him mad he used a wicked finger against her. Behind her back. And I didn't know if he was lying to find out how scared I was of him. And he also was a bedwetter and smelt like urine because he always liked to shower at night when he should have done it when he woke up. Then he would say, I learned some wrestling moves. Can I use it against you? And I would tell him no. And as soon as I turned around, he grabbed me from behind and wrapped his leg over mine and fell on top of me while he was shoving my face down the dirt where I couldn't hardly breathe. And that's when my brother came because he was looking for me. And that was enough to make him want to get off of me. And when we left, I was so mad, I waited for the weekend where I knew his mom would be home. And I felt like he owed me an apology, so I told his mom what happened. His mom 
I'm saying, if he did that to you, then he had good reason for it. And talking like a tough woman, she said, leave now or I'm going to slam your body through this wall. And I left knowing she was sticking up for her son. Some hours later, he called, saying stuff like I was his only friend and he wanted me to come over so he could apologize to me personally. And as soon as my brother seen me leaving, he says, where are you going? I told him it was Sean and he wanted me to come over so he could personally apologize to me. He said, if you're stupid enough to go down there, I'm not going to be there for you this time. Because he's obviously lying. I told my brother I think he means it and I left. I went where he lived at and he met me outside and I said, do you have something to say? He said, yeah, I learned some wrestling moves and I want to try it out on you. Then I thought, my brother was right. And when I turned around to go home, he pulled the same stunt on me. Thankfully, the good thing was my brother came on his bike. And as soon as he noticed him, he got off of me. And I told him, you lost my trust. And when I got home, I was planning revenge. Even though I could fight, I was feeling weak from what happened. I had long debates with my parents until I finally got a weight set. After that, I became good at shooting pellet and BB guns at insects. After mastering my cheap weight set, I met this other guy who was in martial arts. And I told him my experience with fighting. And I asked him if he could teach me what he knows. This way I could advance my fighting skills. He said, I don't think I could teach you much since you're a street fighter. Because usually when somebody has experience in fighting, you usually could beat up a martial art person. So there's only very little I could teach you. And he did. And in return, I let him use my gun to shoot bugs in the woods. It was a CO2 gun. And spiders always made the perfect target. Then he said, where are we going to practice shooting at? I said, over there. Even though I didn't see it coming, I felt my hand jerk and I squeezed the gun because I didn't want to let it go. And accidentally shot him in the private area. He went down and his face turned bright red. And the BB made a hole in his pants. And he said, there goes my offsprings. And I panicked. I said, what'd you do that for? And he said, I wanted to show you that I graduated from martial arts school to kick out a gun out of somebody's hand. Then I asked him, what kind of gun was it? He said, a wooden kind. I said, next time somebody's got a gun, make sure it's wooden before you do that. And or they're not trigger happy like I am. And he said, you're supposed to let go of the gun, not squeeze it. Then I said, I'm sorry, nobody taught me that, even though I wouldn't. And like most, I lose a friend either I... Oh, I'll get it. Look what I found, guys. I'll keep this for the frame and you can have this penny because we have too many of them. This is the first for me. I'm going to let my brother know about this one, and that's what happened. <laughs> if you don't believe me, then you can have this thing in your room. You're not going to put that thing in my room. What's the matter? I thought you didn't believe me. The next night, he will believe me now. David! Take this out now! You do it! Mom! Fine! David, get that out of my room now! Good, it was only a nightmare. Oh no, why my parents are up? And that's what happened to me while I was still awake and you was having that nightmare. That's amazing, I never told you about the hair sticking out the left side. And that's what happened to the both of us. Give me proof and I can find out if it's real or not. A light that nothing could come out and the recorder for proof. After coming home after noon. This got sounds of chain and shovel dragging on the cement while a rocking chair is rocking in the middle says, Wee -wee. I need more proof. Then I will record more. I'm keeping this here so there won't be no sound and I'm going to sleep in the living room. Me too. I recorded on the other side of this and the male's voice said, Rocky or Rocka, Honda or Honda, Four or Ford, gas station. I'm going to mail it off to some experts and I'll call you back to tell you about it. The next morning, I dreamt that I woke up in the middle of the night because the phone was ringing, but I didn't answer it. Same here, but in my nightmare, I answered it. Yeah. After that, the phone rang, and my brother says, I'm not getting that. And I said, I guess like my dreams, I will. It sounded like Doug saying, if you want to know, then come here. We went, and his dad told us that Doug is still sleeping, so he went to get him up. And my brother said, you lied. I told him, yo, yeah, I have the brain power to make the phone ring. When his dad got him up and he got out, he told us he didn't call at all. And there's no way to know this fast. Then he said, I'm getting tired of hearing this, so he came over to destroy it. Then across the street on a house, a big shadow moved going by it, and it was... Gone. No cloud, no nothing in the sky. That day, that it happened. Our AC didn't work, so the expert at AC guy said, I don't know why, but I can't fix this. This should work, but it doesn't. So we got a new one. So the few days later, Doug 
When I realized I was matching other people's strength, I still didn't feel like I was strong enough. So we wanted to buy a better weight set and bench and complete it with dumbbells. If I remember correctly, this happened in the summer before I started high school. My next door neighbor, Bob on the left, allowed headbanging parties at his house for a bunch of teens. The guy on the right was 21 and he bought the alcohol. And they would throw these parties often. My brother and I met a different friend. We was all in the backyard shooting targets. One of the drunks told us to stop shooting his fence, but none of us was. And then my brother told me to give him the gun, so it got passed down to him. He got mad about being falsely accused. He purposely shot the fence. And then the drunk got in an outrage because he was drunk. He kept on slamming his bottle until it shattered all over the place and screaming, I told you not to keep doing that. And then Bob climbed the tree and said, hey, that's my neighbors. Leave them alone. Then he said, it's all right, man. It's okay. Later on that night, the cop came. My mom told us the cop was waiting for us outside. Then we all went outside. Then the police officer asked us if we had a BB or pellet gun. At that time, we told him a pellet gun. He told us the house behind us, the window got shot, and it made a hole through the window. And I knew it wasn't us because that gun is not powerful enough to do that. The only thing it would have done is made a crack if you shot right at it. It would have bounced off it if it ricocheted. After saying that, the police officer said he was going to go there to find out if it was a pellet or BB. And he heard the party next door and asked us how long did we have to put up with that disturbance. And my parents said often. And after he checked out the place, he said he was going to go and make the police report on us if he could find the evidence and on them for disturbance. So he went down there to check on our backyard neighbor and to fill out the rest of the police report and told us to stay inside because he's going to be right back. While we was inside, my mom was angry and wanted to find the truth out. She said, I want to see the gun and find out how powerful it is. I had no idea what she had in mind, but I put a fresh CO2 in and the first shot is always the most powerful one. So I tried as quick as I can to leak some of the gas out. We went out in the backyard. At night, that thing echoed like a real gun. Even the policeman heard it. My mom said it depends how deep it went in the ground is how powerful this gun really is. And that's when the headbangers came out. A few of them were screaming, Yeah, it's because of you were getting in trouble! And then Bob jumped the fence. And that's when Joe came out the sliding door. As soon as Bob seen us, he was running through the front gate and I went chasing after him. He turned around and we got a big fist fight. In the backyard, my mom told my brother to hide the gun inside the house until the cop comes. But my brother was so nervous of having the gun, he couldn't let go of it, and he went outside the front yard with it. Then I seen the oldest headbanger coming at me. He jumped over the fence, and he was so messed up drunk, he was saying, You could have shot my girlfriend! But his underage girlfriend was a few houses down from there. And when I seen him coming after me, I looked at my brother, and I noticed him still holding the gun. And he was mad, still saying, You could have shot my girlfriend! And he was still coming toward my way. I turned around is still seeing the gun. As soon as I'm seeing that he's getting too close, I grab the gun and point it right at his forehead. To show him I'm not playing around, I'm a serious. As he was running around, my brother grabbed the gun and pulled it back. I was so mad I pulled the gun back forward and behind this guy's head. So my brother used both of his hands to pull it back while he was still getting away. But I still had the strength to yank him. Then my brother used both of his hands with his body weight. And I went, ah! But I still pushed him forward. My mom came out and the cop came. And she told me, you better let go of that gun or the cop's gonna put you in jail. So I let go of it. And the cop took away my gun. Even though I wasn't a Christian back then, today I can say thank God he did not see me do that. Then the police officer separated the headbanging gang and talked to some of them on the other side of his car. And I lost it and said... What we need to do, while well, most of them are inside passed out, we need to get together and attack the remaining. My mom said, lower your voice and don't be stupid. You don't want the law enforcement to hear you. Then the police officers checked inside their house in their backyard also. And then he talked to us before he left and said he found a pump BB gun in their backyard. And when he went to the backyard neighbors, they found a BB inside their house. Then said it could have been the other neighbors that done it. Then he told us to stay inside so he could talk to the backyard neighbor to change the report after the evidence he found in their backyard. While we was inside, I told my family, now that the cop is gone, they're going to come outside wanting revenge. And my mom said, you're being dumb being paranoid. And I said, I'm saying this out of experience. Then all of a sudden, I heard a crowd outside. And I looked through the window and thought, take a gun right away. In this old earth, there's always going to be all kinds of weapons. And I turned around and said, yeah, I'm so retarded. They're outside right now with all kinds of weapons. I knew it. And I told you. And the things they have in their hands is not for a peace offering. And they left not doing the neighborhood any favors. Being angry, they went around the whole neighborhood smashing mailboxes, including ours, but not theirs. Of course, that night we had police officers from one end of the block to the other. It looked like we had the whole police force
force out there. As far as you can see, it lit up like Christmas or disco, and they all went to jail. Truth about what happened to us that night. It was me, my brother, Ed, his brother, and our friend. We never played out here at night before. Me and Ed next to me, we were the best at laser tag. It was two of us against three of them. We let them hide first so we could have more of a challenge. I hid here in the middle of the piles of dirt so they could ambush us. Not knowing where they was, I decided and he agreed to go around the outside of the woods to do a sneak attack. Having Ed 17 foot behind me as my backup, and if anybody would have shot me, he would have shot them. After we heard that in the woods, we'd give each other hand signals. The sound was so close, we picked up sticks and pine cones to throw over their heads to make a diversion. This way, when they get up and turn around, we had the advantage to shoot them. By dimming demonic powers, they was getting hit by sticks and pine cones. This my brother. The Word of God says, Since Satan could disguise himself as an angel of light, so can the rest of the devils. That means I have the power to change into any kind of creature. Let's get him! Since two brothers on the opposite team was wearing black, they thought it was Ed and they chased this demon down this way. We heard him running and we followed. The three of them seen it disappeared here. They ran this way because they still heard the running noises and seen the leaves moving. But we didn't understand why they was out in the open. They found this underground fort, a trench with a plywood on top of it. They thought they could explain this by Ed jumping in the hole and covering himself with this piece of wood. Then my brother lifted it up. Let's get him! And found nothing inside. Come on, we got him! We pursued him this way to shoot him up. They hid here to try to make another ambush. Not knowing where they was, I kept Ed as my backup. His brother got tired of waiting and walked down this way. I don't see them. Time out! There's no time out in war. We had them. I just seen a shadow go through my brother. Shaped like a human drunkard, stumbled out of the woods, went through my brother and fell down in the ditch. Don't say that because I felt a cold chill when I couldn't see David. Then he reappeared in front of me like a blink of an eye. <laughs> Man, that's just great. My friend's in the hospital, and the only way to get there is through these woods. But at least I have my flashlight and walkman, because I definitely don't want to see or hear anything. Then listening to my worldly Satan mix, because I wasn't a Christian back then, my flashlight went out, and I don't want to stick around to find out what's next. Hi, Scott. I thought I'd come over to surprise you. Yeah, big deal. You don't know what I went through to get here. Yeah, what's that? I went through those haunted woods that you don't have to pay for to go through. I don't want to hear it no more. Go home. If you don't believe me, why don't you come back there at night with me? No, just leave me alone. Good night. Bye. Oh, come on. Now my battery's draining out on this wolf, man. Making it sound this creepy. Bad timing. We notice you running out of the woods. You never ask. We're not supposed to hear about the supernatural. You're saying that because you don't believe. Do you? I have to see it to believe it. So I'm saying don't believe. I can prove that it's real by taking you out the woods at night. What is that supposed to mean? I'll tell you all about it before we get there. Are you coming, brother? No. Sometimes if you wait a while, something's going to happen. You're hearing this in the middle of the woods. Yeah, and there's nobody around. The more we wait, something more would happen. Let's go. There I was! Amen. And EH, as you can see in this blueprint, or as we like to call it, emotionally hyper, in high school. After eating lunch and I had extra time, I talked to this older gen of man. He talked about simpler times in the past, and I talked about the hard times I grew up in. After he got finished eating, he was so interested in my stories that he told me to wait here until after he used the bathroom, because he wanted to hear more. And as soon as he left, this guy comes in from my classroom. He was stalking me, waiting for the right opportunity for me to be alone.
phone saying, Hey, big boy, come here often? I started feeling like I was in prison. Feeling like I was going to get raped. Excuse me. Something bad done against my will. I picked up the closest weapon I had to use against him and said, Come on! He said, Ooh, I like him rough. By that time, the older gentleman came back and told him to get out of his room. Sometime later in the afternoon, I met this other adult. And the only thing he mainly did is bragged about his achievements. Then he told me he had to do something important, but he'll be right back and he'll tell me the rest. Wow, I can hardly wait, if you understand the sarcasm. But I had patience in whatever gets me out of the classroom. And that's when this big redneck Bubba came in. Talking about, we made again, big boy wink. He winked at me. And I felt trapped in the small room. He came up and grabbed me. And I pushed him down as I tripped him. Then I screamed, get up. He said, no, come down here to join me. I said, get up and fight. He said, why don't you come down here and wrestle with me instead? I said, get up and fight like a real man. The teachers and other grown-ups heard us and came in and broke it up. Shortly after that, I seen him by himself through this glass window of the door. And thought this time it's my turn to do something to him. He winked at me, I slammed open the door and I tackled them like I was in football. And after I did this I heard David! Then my teacher Miss Selcox and my teacher aide Miss Snelling both explained to me that him and his friend did the same thing to this other guy in the bathroom. That he tried to do to me but his friend is the only one that got caught and got kicked out. So you need to stay away from him. And I was thinking oh great now you tell me? And then when he came back he said I'm not gonna bother with you no more because you're too hard to get. But if you want that fight, let's go outside. And as soon as I went out to the hallway, he shamed me by closing the door and locking it behind me. Late one night, I noticed a couple of clowns. Now the reason why I say this is because the big guy was riding in the small bike. And the small guy on the big bike. But I thought nothing more of it when they passed me by. Then I see them circle me again. And they went around in front of this car. That stopped a few feet away from me. This black guy came out of the car and I thought they was just dropping them off to the house. Or so I thought. Back then, I bought this $75 digital Walkman. It was the newest thing at the time. And that guy started walking up to me with a Just Do It shirt. He said something to me, but I didn't hear him because I was listening to my music mix. And I didn't realize this big, tall black guy was got off his bike and went behind me. I took off my headset and said, What? I said, you don't mind if I take your Walkman away from you. And I smiled because I thought he was joking. So the warning for my listeners, never walk alone, especially in the dark street. And I found out that he wasn't kidding, especially when he reached out for my Walkman. And when he done it, I went to punch him in the stomach. But I barely tapped him with his big guy in the back grabbed both of my upper arms and yanked me back. My Walkman and headset stumbled on the ground. He picked it up and he ran into the car and took off. And I lost my balance during this. The right side was soft, but he decided to throw me in the street to be mean. Then I heard running. When I was trying to get up and look, I see the small guy jump in the air and land in the back of my head with both his feet. That night I had a big scab in my forehead. I seen a big flash of white light as he jumped off my head. Then I heard the bigger guy running when I was trying to get up. I turned my head and he stomped his foot on my jaw, causing my mouth to bleed. And that's when my adrenaline kicked in. I hit the road. I mean, I slapped the road. I went from laying flat down until straight up in the air. Big Black looked shocked at me and took off with his big bike and the little guy took off with the small bike. As I was chasing him away because he was closest to me. And I was using some curse words, but as a Christian, I'm not going to say what it was. But this is my BC story, so that means before Christianity. And then I hit the sign. <laughs> The next day, I went out for my usual walks. My parents didn't really want me to go because of what happened the other night. I said, it's daylight and this is my own neighborhood. Because of that, I believe nothing's going to happen. So my mom told my brother to follow me. And it happened again. This one was some athletic high school football players, all white. The car was a few feet in front of us. I handed my brother this Walkman and I borrowed from this girl. And told my brother to hide it and get ready for a fight. My brother said, you're paranoid. They probably just wanted to ask for directions. I told my brother... If it was so they would have stopped next to us but they're preparing for something and as soon as we was walking next to them one guy in the back of the car said hey you as soon as i looked at him he said yeah you you got a problem i walked in the grass and said no but do you and then batman got out of the seat in the back car and this bad team pulls out a bat while it was shining in my face by the sun said something bad and noticed my brother kept walking far away and that's when i ran off some might say don't look back because it will slow you down and it does but i was only looking back so he 
wouldn't hit me with the bat as he was swinging it at me while we was both running. I noticed my brother and his friend staring at me, hearing my brother say, he's always getting in trouble. And they was both smiling like they was watching some kind of TV series. I rolled around in front of him to try to trip him. Everything seemed to be going slow motion at that moment of time. And that's when he jumped over me. I got up and pointed and said, I didn't do nothing to you. He shook alert like he was thinking about what I said to him. And when I heard my brother's friend's dad started to come out, I made a big mistake by looking at the door instead of looking at my enemy. And I was thinking, oh no, and when I looked, he wasn't there, so I chased down after him after he took off in the car. And he did this because his dad came out saying, whoa, what's going on here? As he was running outside. And then when they was going down the road, I said, next time I'm gonna have my gun and I'm coming after all of you! And they stopped and I seen all the car doors opening. And when they seen the dad next to me, they closed all the doors and took off. So we wind up getting a new student. It was Sean Stinkin' Bear. He did not notice me at first. You remember, he was one of my past stories. Remembering what he did to me, I got extremely angry. And he walked in and demanded, Who's this this is? And Miss Silcox replied, It was mine until I got an upgrade. And he said, Good, it's mine now. And that's when he noticed me. He said, It's you! Let's get together after school, so I can show you the same moves like I did before in the past. Where I can shove your face down on the ground so you can breathe dirt again. Now the students that was there knew that I handled Tubba Bubba, and, after talking to Tough Guy Talk, saying, Don't push me, man! As I was gripping the desk, and the student sounded like, Ooh. He said, What are you wooing for him for? And he didn't know I met my maximum strength at this point. Even though I was strong, I never looked like it. This way, after picking on me, they would never mess with nobody else not knowing their strength. And then he said, He's nothing but a wimp. Then I said, Quit pushing me, man! Quit pushing me! He said, After school, I can't wait to shove your face down in the dirt again. After getting up and slinging my desk down, he gets up from off his seat, slaps his hand on his desk, and says, What you gonna do? Then I grabbed his desk and slung it over. He grabbed and tried to trip me, but I took the leverage as my advantage, and I was banging his head against the lock as the back door and the plexiglass. <laughs> The whole classroom heard the ruckus, and it took a lot of them to pull me off of him. And I swung at his temple to knock him out, but they yanked me too far away for me to hit him, and I missed. After that, he's the one that got in trouble for instigating the fight in the first place. This older lady, my teacher aide, bought me the soda to cool down. When I was starting to walk past the principal office, and that's when he noticed me, he came up to me and said, Looks like I'm gonna get strong and I'm gonna beat you! I said, Let's go, I'll finish this right now! In my anger, I squeezed the can and I got soda splattered on both of us. He said, No, man! I'll tell everybody else that you beat me up to even the score. And I was shocked that he kept his word. If I was a Christian, I would have said God got his revenge through me. And that's when I trusted Sean again. And better than that, he helped me get my first job. During the summer, my teachers helped me get in this program to learn a trade in this trade school while earning some money. The only thing they had available is this diesel mechanics. I met this guy that can make realistic art. He asked me, Hey man, can you do some good art too? I'm fairly okay at it, but not as great as you. Well, here's a piece of paper. I want to see how well you do. And when I was doing so, somebody hit the table, making him look like some kind of zombie. <laughs> I burst out in laughter. He got so upset with me, he drew a picture of me doing something inappropriate with this other guy. I tried to grab it and rip it into pieces. He snatched it and ran away with it, and showed others what he'd drawn against me, while he was laughing about it, as I was chasing him. He ran around this heavyset bodybuilder. The people were saying that he was so strong he could pick up small engines. He showed him the picture where he'd drawn, and he laughed about it, <laughs> while I was trying to snatch the paper away from them. Muscles handed back the picture and turned to me, saying, You better back off far away from me. I said, No, as long as you're in his side, I'm not going to. He grabbed me, picked me up, and the tough guy slammed me down on the table and decided I'm going to stay away from this guy. No matter where he went, I was in the opposite side until he cornered me in the locker room during lunchtime. He felt sorry for what he did. He shared his lunch with me and said, A whole bunch of us got together and talked to the main guy in charge, and he agreed that you and the other guy could go in the back and duke it out. And when he left 
left, I was thinking how I was going to fight him. And then he came in. And I was thinking we could get this over with now while I'm still mad at him. And he said, Psst. David, I'm scared of you. Can we come up with a way where we don't have to fight each other after school? I never had somebody say they were scared of me before. I said, okay, let me think of a plan. I got it. I tell you to hit me first, and you said, no, you hit me first, and we just go on until they give up. He said, it sounds like a good plan. I hope it works. By the end of the day, we had students surrounding us. Come on, man, throw the first punch. No, I'm waiting for you to do it. There's only going to be three hits. You hit me, I hit you, and you hit the ground. And the crowd was saying, somebody hit somebody. I I said, no, I'm waiting for him to hit me first. No, you're supposed to hit me first. And the crowd was saying, ah, nobody's going to hit nobody. And more than half of them left. And when they was going, the others were saying, well, we're going to stick around until something happens. Come on, man, and fight so I can beat you down. No, you swing at me so I can beat you up. And more of them left until it was like two or three, saying the bell's about to ring for the bus to come. I'm ready whenever you are. The same goes for me. And somebody in the crowd was saying, the only fight they're doing is arguing with each other. Well, we got time left. Let's grab a stuff and go and they left i was starting to think that wouldn't work and then we left this is a story about what happened to me in my last year of high school. Bye, Mystery Man. Now listen, class. There's going to be a new student. His name is David Cooper. And he's being kicked out of a lot of different schools because of fighting. When he comes in and tries to pick a fight, just ignore him. Especially you, David. you got to keep your cool. A little while later. Class, I want you to meet David Cooper. Yo, I want to know who's the toughest one in this classroom. Because I'm not going to fight the small guy and work my way up. I'm going to fight the toughest guy in here, so I'm gonna be the toughest in the classroom. So who is it gonna be? And when I seen all those fingers pointing at me, I was thinking, oh no. Me and you, after school. After school, he kept his word, followed me to try to pick a fight. Uh, you remember me? We're supposed to be fighting? Then he was pretending to look at these papers. Yeah, it's written down in my schedule. It's written right here. Appointment after school. I even marked it down in my calendar. Even though it's funny now, it wasn't funny then. Then he was literally pushing me to a fight. Come on, man, I've got other appointments. And I don't I want to disappoint my other customers. I turned around and said, You need to stop pushing me. Then try to keep my calm. I turned around and started walking back home. Then he kept on physically pushing me, saying, What's the matter, you scared? I turned around and said, Yeah, I'm scared I'm going to hurt you. His jaw dropped. And with a wide mouth looking shock at me, I turned around and walked off. Thinking, I guess he's not used to having tough guy talk, talk back to him. And he stopped right there when I was walking away from him. As soon as I heard him running behind me, I will quickly look down to see if I could see his shadow to find out which side he's coming from. If he was going to come to my right side, I was going to quickly turn around and punch him on my left. And if he was going to come to my left side, I was going to quickly turn around and punch him on my right. The problem with that, the sun was right in front of me and not behind me. He jumped on my back, I took him for a spin, grabbed him and threw him off me. He said, I'm starting to wear you out. Let that be a warning to you not to mess with me. Between the two tough guys, I started walking away. I didn't expect that he would make the same move twice, but he did. This time I picked him up and threw him in the bushes. He said, I almost got you beat now. I said, you're crazy, man, you're crazy. And the same for the third time. I picked him up and did a 360, and I thrown his back against a tree. And he landed on his ribs on the roots. Oof. I didn't mean to hurt him that badly, so I apologized, saying, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. I almost got you now. And I was thinking, yes, he is crazy. And when I went up to the door to unlock it, he went up right behind me to tap on my shoulder, thinking this guy wants to fight to the death and I quickly turn around to hit him before he hits me I quickly pulled back my fist when I seen his hand out for friendship saying um I wonder if we can become friends and we did and this all happened in the early 90s that day, David Cooper and I was walking down the neighborhood, listening to our own things with our Walkmans. While we was walking down the street, I heard a door slam, and I seen these two strong guys yelling about something. And it was coming toward us. And they both looked mad. They seemed like they would fight anybody that got in their way. And I was thinking, I don't know David Cooper that well, so if we start fighting and losing, I didn't know if he was going to run away from this and leave me to fight this battle by myself. I got his attention to say to him to avoid a fight. Hey, David. Yeah, what is it, David? You see those looking guys coming toward us? Yes, yeah, so? Let's walk to the other side so we don't get in their way. What's the matter, you chicken? No, I want to be smart about this. You do whatever you want. I'm walking right here. And knowing they was keep bumping into me, I knew he would follow me anywhere I went. As soon as we went to the other side, so did they. And that proved to me that they did want to fight us. But the chances are I could have been wrong. Because it could have been a coincidence. And I told David, let's act like we know what we're talking about. Because I wanted them to think we knew somebody nearby. And that's being street smart. That's right, David. They 
live in the other side nearby. As soon as we went back to the other side, so did they. And then they say anything more knowing there was no way out of it. Plus they was coming too close to us. And this is how it was when we was walking between each other. I guess they changed their mind when they seen us up close. I felt a little better when they passed us by. And the tense movement happened when David said, I knew they was too chicken to do anything. I pulled up my fist ready for a fight. We turned around and they kept on walking. Later on, David had said, Next time we go to school, I'm going to tell everybody how scared you was. I said, I was worried about you leaving me behind to let the battle to myself while you escaped. You should know me better than that. How? When this is the first time we walked together? Yeah, I'm going to tell everybody how scared you was. Unless we go back to fight the guys. And I didn't want them to go back to school rumored that I'm a wimp. Ruining my tough guy image. So I told him the plan about us lying about what happened. And he agreed. But being a Christian, I won't share that detailed lie. Later on, the both of us cut through the woods in a cemetery to hang out in the mall for free samples and free water. He didn't want to do it at first, but he got used to going back and forth doing this. So what is it going to be? I'm only going to give you two choices. Because we didn't fight a fight yet. Either we start one, or you make up another lie. I learned very little of God, realizing lie is a sin. And a sin is doing something against God. And that's why I felt so bad in the first place of lying. After we lied the first time to others. The difference between me and you, I fight because I have no choice. And you because you want it. Either we do this or I'm going to tell everybody in the classroom how scared you was that day. And how you made up that lying story. You also told others that lie. So I'm not the one with the reputation to hold up. Besides with this other lie, we can make a gang of friends. Then we made up another lie that worth telling. And his plan backfired. It caused the people not to want to hang out with us because they was too scared to. And I also told him that it's going to get back at us for all this lying by allowing something to really happen. He said, Good, I can't hardly wait. And then something almost did happen again. I don't know how many days later, but this is what happened. We were walking through the mall and we heard all these black people fussing and cussing. Action time! As soon as he said that, he rushed off for his next fight. I grabbed his shoulder and pulled him the face toward me and said, What do you think you're doing? We gotta go where the opportunity knocks. Or do you want to make up another lie? No. It's either fight or I'm going to tell everybody how much a scaredy cat you are. Or the third church make up another lie. I'm just trying to be wise about it because we're outnumbered. And you can hear a lot of them in there. The more the merrier. When there was this family rushing out of that fast food place to get away from that bad language. When they was walking between us, I noticed he was quickly going in. So I quickly rushed, grabbed his shoulder, and pulled him back toward me. I gave in to him because I didn't want us to get ganged up on. Fine, we'll make up something. Once we got out of the mall, we created a new move just in case something bad happened. Happens. We both turned around to look at each other. We hit each other's fist and we walked toward her. Then I started hands-on training. There was this bully guy that everybody was afraid of work in the tool room. So I forgot names of stuff that I needed. And that's when he was giving me a hard time because of it. And that's when I explained what I needed for and what it does. And then he made fun of me. So I got mad and I said, what I need is right there. He said, boy, you're messing with the wrong person. And because of that, I'm going to beat you up around lunchtime. And that's your teacher not to snap at me. And I said, you started the whole thing. He said, for that, I'm going to meet you outside when you go into lunch. And I'm going to tell you who you're messing with. Last time somebody spoke up against me in the PE field, I took my bat and I kept on hitting him in the head with it. While I was making this hollow sound as I kept on hitting him with it while he was down. I seen him waiting for me while I was going toward lunch. You didn't think I would forget about it, did you? And Mr. Adams, one out of three, was in charge. And he was one of those bodybuilders. He noticed the fight was about to happen. To try to stop it, he grabbed me from behind. So I grabbed him and threw him off of me. And after he seen what I'd done, he backed off. He was smart enough not to bother me again, except for trying to get along with me. Sometime later, while still learning a trade, I got this job being a cook making roast beef sandwiches. Have you had any enemies in your lifetime? Lots. Well, there's one looking for you. What does he look like? White flat nose and a deformed lip. And about a inch and a half smaller than you. With lots of muscles. Then he said your parents told him where you work and you're getting off soon. Then he told me to tell you. Tell him I'm gonna meet him outside. Should I call the law on him? No, I can handle it. Later on that night David Cooper and I was walking to where I lived. You know how to make a scene. But I'm glad you're back. You're living here again now? I came back because we were supposed to be roommates, remember? Yes, but I didn't graduate from trade school yet. And I'm only working part time. Hey, can you just quit school and start working full-time? Because I did come a long way to get here. No, because I don't want to work in a job. I want a career. And then we can become roommates. How long is that supposed to happen? It's a two-year course, and I got one more year left. Okay, before I leave tomorrow, you're going to do me one more favor. Let's hang out in the ball like old times. And then I'll come back next year so we can become roommates. It was the next morning before he left, and it seemed like God really allowed something to happen this time. For all those lies we told in the past, this guy called us a name, which we didn't understand what it meant. I think what that means, I want to 
fight. Yes, yeah, so I'll meet us back of the mall. As we were following him out of the mall, I was thinking long and hard. Why two average guys want to beat up on two tough guys? I felt like we was getting set up for something really bad about to happen. So I told David Cooper, let's get some free waters first. Don't worry, we can meet you outside. We just like to get refreshments before we kick some butt. Why are you stalling? You know in the past we always go by your plans. Yes, so? But this time I got a plan. Uh, I better like it. You notice I'm going out that door? I'm not liking your plan so far. Well, we go through the doors to the food court. Oh, I get it so we can do a sneak attack. Whatever he was thinking is fine by me. What I didn't know, they got tired of waiting, so they decided to drive around looking for us. And this is what the truck looked like. David, they was throwing pennies at us. Why don't you try to throw some dollars? I don't think they're trying to pay us. And that made them turn back around. They're throwing firecrackers at us. I don't care, I'm gonna pick it up and throw it back at them. It's between your feet. And David Cooper continually continued this by saying, It's what I thought, you scared. Then the vehicle stopped and they both jumped out of the back of the truck. While they was coming after us, we looked at each other and gave ourselves a fist bump and went after them. They looked at each other, went back in the truck and took off. That's what I thought, scared. And as soon as they parked, I knew I was correct. This is one Bill Big guy that came out with the baseball bat that looked like they just bought it. And there was at least one or two more in the truck. Do you Remember when we said that you always take the big guy? Yes. This time I take the big guy and you take the other two guys. But David, he's got a golden baseball bat that's shining in the sun. I don't care. I take it from him, shove it up his butt and make it come out of his mouth. That's when he looked at his bat, put it down, and it rolled underneath the truck. And when I went to fight the two guys, one and after the other, keep on trying to grab me from behind. While David Cooper was still running around trying to kick this guy. <laughs> And this big redneck guy seen the whole thing and came out saying, Leave those two guys alone! And when they seen it was gonna be an even fight, they took... Got into this accident. Joey stayed with me for moral support. We talked about church, God, and the devil's powers in those woods. You wanna go because there's only two or three minutes away from here where I live. And without him saying a word, we went. Mm. Did you hear that? I think we need to leave. Rub we need to go now. So you did hear that. I'm just trying to prove my point. Now let's go deeper in the middle of the woods so more things can happen. We are going to now I know you had to heard that. Where'd he go? Don't leave me because there's gotta be two or three in his name. Why was Satan mad? While I was in St. Augustine, I noticed these students picking on a new guy. I told him to come here and get behind me. So I said to the ones picking on him, Leave him alone! Then they asked me, Why are you protecting him? Because I know how he feels. Come on, Christian Day, why should he mean anything to you? You never know, he might become president one day and he might pay me for being his bodyguard. When I seen the same thing happening the next day, I got him to come with me and told him, You need to find me and stay with me if you don't want them picking on you. And I said all this because I can't stand somebody picking on somebody smaller and weaker. He stayed in my side for a while until he couldn't deal with it any longer and left. One day on going to the bus ride home, I heard a commotion. So I asked him, what's going on guys? And the person next to me said, Christian Dave, you really don't want to get involved with this. And another person said, you better go before they get here because there's going to be a fight between the trade school and the high school. And as soon as they showed up, I said, why don't we all spend time on being friends and the wasted on being enemies? Because I have my Bible and Jesus said, says to love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another and they all got mad and interrupt me and said to me get out of here with all of that I said no if we follow this this world would be a better place to live in and both sides agreed if I didn't stop they was gonna come after me instead so all of them was mad at me instead of each other at this point and I said if we learn to follow this we'll be helping each other not trying to hurt each other then security and the buses came and both sides said they were gonna gang up on me for this tomorrow on Friday and they left and I thought to myself, in Jesus' name, God gave me the strength. When that day comes, then I went on the bus to go home. After that, I went to my favorite place, for heaven's sakes, at the mall, where I used to buy a lot of godly Christian tapes at. She even knew about Christian songs being important. And that's just one of the many ways to worship the Lord besides following in His words. I always see you so happy. Why are you looking so miserable? And I told her what happened, as we know, the Bible says, 1 Peter 5, 7, Casting all your cares upon God, for He cares for you. So we pray prayed about the Lord's protection over me. The next day, the next afternoon, the next week, the next month, month after month after that, by not seeing them there, I was seeing God at work. Sometime later, inside the building, there was all these white people scared to walk down the hallway in this building. But I wasn't. They got off from leaning on the walls, and they surrounded me and said, You got something for us? I said, Yes, I got something for all of you. They said, What do you got for us? I reached in my pocket and said, The Word of God. They all backed off, and one of them said, We don't know 
know nothing about it, and we don't want to know anything about it. And when they abandoned me, it was sad because I thought God's words are so powerful that they did not want to hear about love instead of hate. At this point, me and Joey was walking down to his job at the chicken place to get his check. This guy was walking up behind us calling us names, and while we was walking, I looked at Joey and asked him, Do you know this guy? He said, Yes, but keep on walking and ignore him. He said, Yes, I'm talking to you to give us a description of what we look like. And he said in his own words, mainly that we're a couple. And I got mad when he lied saying that we're going against God doing something like that. While Joey went to his job. The guy circled around me while having his hand in his back pocket. And I followed him around so he won't get behind me. He said he's got something for me in the back of his pocket. And I told him I got something for you too. He said, what do you got for me, huh? What do you got? I said, the words of God. He said, you're a Christian, huh? And I said, yeah, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. He said, after I tear you up, I'm going to get my gang and finish you off. And what is your guy going to do for you now? Then he quickly did his martial art kick. I leaned back and at the same time grabbed his ankle and pushed him off of me until he hit the ground. Then he did his karate move to get back up again. And guess who God sent my way? <laughs> yes, it was that same guy when I started high school. David, is that guy trying to mess with you? You better leave before I mess you both up. You want to talk to me like that? If you want to fight, I'll bust you up right now. No, me and him are cool because he's a Christian. And then he left. And I thanked them. Then Joey came out saying they called the police. And when they came, even though he threatened me, I pressed no charges because I decided to do a Christian thing and forgive him. And those two drove us to the bank in the back of their truck. Before Joey went in, the police officer stopped us and said, I found your guy. You sure you don't want to press charges? And said, yeah, I'm certain I didn't change my mind. But what was that weapon he claimed to have? He said it was a giant lighter. After they left, I waited on Joey and noticed that same guy walking past me and he noticed me and he just kept on walking. That day, I was working dense out of this vehicle and there was all these black people that started this training but all of them choose to be in the break room so they could talk about sinful stuff. And the group was tempting these two buddies to knock down this white person's stuff. And they both said no, fearing that I might do something about it. And they all said, no, he's not going to do anything about it because we found out that he's a Christian. And besides, you got all of us to back you up. And as soon as he did it, they all laughed. I kept calm and I picked up my stuff. And they said, I told you he wasn't going to do nothing about it, so do it again. And he did, and they all laughed, and I started getting mad about it. Then I picked up my stuff and put it back on the table, and they was laughing even more. Remember Proverbs chapter 17, verse 5. Whosoever makes fun of the poor dishonors God. And the person that is glad at someone's hurts, that has joy in it, will not be unpunished. And as they was laughing, they said, do it again. And when he did it again, I was in an outrage. As I was heading to the room, the heavy set guy said, I'm going to hold this door and he can't get through. They all scattered. And he tried to get away from me. And I grabbed his lower legs. And I pulled him down and he hit the chair. Grabbed him, picked him up, and thrown him through the door. And I said, now go pick up my stuff. And then Mr. Foreman called me in his office. David, you could have seriously hurt that boy. Never do that again. After my two-year scholarship ended, he told the people paying for it that he wasn't going to give me a diploma because he felt like I didn't know enough. And I thought, it's really his fault that I don't know enough. And they asked him, how long is that going to take? He said, about another year. I felt like he didn't have any intentions to graduate me. So I got this car wash job. I wanted to save enough money to move out, but my mom wouldn't allow that. David Cooper became a chain smoker, so there's no way I would be his roommate. But I did convince him of Christianity. And the devil will use the cop to stop us for suspicion. And David Cooper said, don't worry about him, he's crazy because he believes in God. There are 7, 26 through 28. God said if they don't want to hear you, you got to tell them anyways. One night, I dreamt about this new guy that got started on the bus to go to St. Augustine. He sat down next to me to confess all of his sins. I woke up thinking that it was only a dream. And when I seen the same guy, not only I knew God was giving me a vision, but he was trying to tell us something. So I tested it out and told him about it. And every sin I told him he needed to turn away from, he denied doing it. And I went to the classroom feeling stupid that I even mentioned it. Until, hey, how'd you find out all those things about me? Because God loves you so much, he's trying to get your attention so you can change for him. I don't no, just think about it and give him a try. Only seen him a few times and he never said another word. My past friend Scott came to visit me with a surprise. And since he has a carnal mind, he was telling me how he was in his bar. And he met this female that was doing this movie in Florida. And when he got the opportunity, he was talking to this female about the movie I wanted to make. And it originally was worldly until I became a Christian and I want to make a Christian version of it. And he came over day by day making the script for me so he could write it all down. And even got books on how to make a script better and that's what we was getting together doing. By the next morning, my mom asked me, why are you two always getting together all this time for? And when I told her, 
there, she didn't believe it, even though I was convinced. So I told this guy that I work with, and I asked him what he thought about it. And then he told me that he thinks he's telling the truth because he told me he heard this morning on this radio station that she was there. And they didn't want to release this information until now because they didn't want nobody to interrupt it. And it caused me to believe that it was more true. Besides him keep coming over because why would he waste his time and study how to do all this? And that's when I was trying to convince my mom of all this. But because of her doubt, she was trying to cause me to doubt it as well. So I prayed to God for him to reveal the truth to me in some way. And then I fell asleep in prayer. Then I woke up and didn't realize I was dreaming because everything was exactly the way it was. And this light covered me. And as soon as it uncovered me, I heard God's voice saying, Ask him here for here he cannot lie. Scott, did you or did you not lie about this movie? Well, uh, I don't want to talk about it, David. I don't want to talk about it. You can't lie to me. It sounds like you did, did you? Yes. And then I got up remembering the dream. This guy came early in the morning on the weekend. Hi, David. I can't get together with you for this script. I have to work on my job with my Christian boss. Scott, I found out that you lied about this movie. Well, uh, I don't want to talk about it, David. I don't want to talk about it. So it is true that you lied to me. How'd you find out? God. How? He let me know in my dreams just like the Old and New Testament talks about. Then he looked shocked at me with his jaw drop. I don't want to lose you as a friend. This guy can forgive me through Jesus Christ from the sins I left behind so I can forgive I was friends with the family and God needed me to witness to Tony. He's the one that I was telling about the possessed dolphin painting. And went with me to the devil's woods back then. And I haven't seen him in years before I was a Christian. He brought us drinks and I brought us food. It's like Jesus said in Matthew 10, 8. Freely receive, freely give. Even though he didn't have much of a story to tell, I was telling him about what my experience was leading up to my Christianity. Then all of a sudden this anger of God came up to me saying, You need to stop from doing drugs that harm you. And stop lusting after the flesh. And quit hanging around the wrong people. And then he got up and left. And I was thinking the Christ in me must be mad at him. It's like when Jesus got mad more than once in the New Testament. Because I was telling him things I wasn't even aware of. The stuff that he was actually doing. Then I came back to witness to him as often as I could. And I was trying to get him interested in Christian songs. And Christian movies that they didn't have a lot of. And with that it sounded like I got Tony interested in the Christian drama that was coming up in a few weeks. Within one week we talked about it day after day. And when that day came he stayed away. So I decided not to bother them no more even though I told them everything. And I don't know how many weeks or months afterwards, but my mom told the workers and they all told me that Tony died from hanging out with the bad crowd. The mom called me to find out if he went to heaven or a place called the Lake of Fire. I told her I don't know. He might have asked for forgiveness as he was dying. She told me, you're the dream prophet, make certainly sure. For every night that I had a regular dream, she would call me to find out. I keep telling her that yet, but maybe if I spend a night in his room, it might happen. And I don't remember how many days this happened after we went to his funeral, but she never unlocked his door ever since. But she agreed to it. Through Jesus Christ, God was right about him lusting after the flesh. And it was hard for me to sleep because the place stunk like cigarettes. And I'm allergic to that. Plus, I was glad the preaching took effect because it was these sticky notes covering her private areas. And the black light stayed constantly on. But he should have just removed all those magazine cutouts. But it's because of my mind to sleep because he had a sister and I wanted her to join me. And that's when his evil spirit attacked me. And by my own strength, I couldn't get up. And I was thinking, in Jesus' name, God forgive me of my wicked imagination. And this devil got off of me. And I thought in my own strength I could hold myself up while I was thinking it again. And because of this heavy pressure holding me down, and I thought, Heavenly Father, forgive me in Jesus' name. And this demon got off of me. And I used all my strength this time, and I was foolish enough to think this sinful thought again. And I prayed in Jesus' name, remove this sinful thought. And as soon as it got off me, I prayed to God that he would show me what happened to Tony. And that's when I finally got a vision in my dream. In this room, Tony was sitting in his white judgment seat. As a young Christian, I mistake this for heaven. Then all of a sudden, this black hole opens up. Taking him down this pit that's called the lake of fire. I said, God, is there a way to stop this from happening? He said, as long as she can stop living for her sinful self and live for me. And when she asked me the question again, I said, heaven, because I was saying to her what I thought of first scene. But I told her she needs to change her ways for living for God. She misunderstood me. And she says, if Tony could go to heaven for what he did, then I can too. After that, she was smoking all kinds of different drugs. And God knows what else. Then I understood God in his words that stopping it wasn't going to happen. Like in the Bible where Abraham left Sodom and Gomorrah and questioning God for not destroying the place for 50 righteous and he talked his way down all the way down to 10 and each time God agreed with him knowing that he wouldn't find any and it's the same that God knowing that she wouldn't be right for him
One late afternoon, I came over and she came out. Is Bill here? No. Do you know when he's going to be back? No. As soon as I turned around to go to the car to leave, but Bill said if you come by, take me shopping for us so we could get some real food because we only got junk food. I don't know. It doesn't seem right. Let me ask him first. Where's he working? He's not at his first job. He's at his second job, and nobody's supposed to disturb him or he's going to get fired for it. In that case, I better leave and come back later. As I started to leave to come back much later, he's going to come back way late at night. And if you want to remain friends, then I see suggest you help us out so he can come home to a mill. And that's when she got to me because I had very little friends if you go back to my past stories. And they all left. So I really didn't want to lose this one. On the way there, she told me she remembered her husband wanted a pizza when he got home. Ready to order? What would you like on your pizza? It's not supposed to be for me. Bill wouldn't like it if I didn't feed you a slice. Especially for driving me around like this for us. So what kind? Any kind of meat pizza would be fine, thanks. A meat likers, please. After we got done late that night and she really got mad at me for ignoring her that whole time one i'm a christian i don't fornicate we wait for marriage two we don't cheat because that would be committing adultery and three when i wasn't a christian i wouldn't mess with somebody else's wife because that would be gross because they've been with that person take me home right away after i dropped her off she rushed to that trailer to get away from me i don't remember exactly how long later but i came back for bill to find out if she was telling me the truth is bill here no but he said when you come just to tell you thanks for the pizza and to ask you to take me clothes shopping. Is he working in the restaurant so that I could ask him about it? No, but if you want to remain friends with him, then I suggest you take me. And I think she used that because she knew he got me before. And as soon as she went to the female section, I stayed where I was. Are you coming with me? I'm fine right here. Oh, come on. How do you think I would look in this? I think your husband would like it. And she left with the quickness, and I took her back home. Now, I don't remember if it was the next day or some days later, but I decided to do something different by going to the restaurant where they both worked at. But I had bad timing that night because he wasn't working, she was. And she asked me, I get off in a few minutes, can you take me home? And Bill should be there. And I told her okay, and I was thinking about asking him if those other two times were true. So she told me to drive in front of the place so I could pick her up. And as soon as I did, this other guy comes in the back. Then she said I told him that you wouldn't mind dropping him off first. He was staying at this motel. She betrayed me with a kiss on the cheek and went with him. And thankfully Bill was at that trailer at that time. After I told him everything he said he trusts me because I never lied to him before. And she lied. And take me where she was last at. And so I did. Yeah they went around this area. He knocked on every door asking for his wife. Until he got to the right one. How could you do this to me? I could go anywhere I want. Whenever I want. To do who I want. I could sleep with him, 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 him and and while the finger went around me, him, we practically stayed together all that night, sharing stories until I told him about the devil possessed woods. He caught me off guard by saying, let's go, and we went. And when we came back, we prayed together. After he moved, we started a Bible study group. And in that group, Robert became part of us. And Robert and I Bible studied his place so he could get a group of his own when Bill's not around. And that's what we did. If I remember correctly, I came on a weekend. Robert's wife answered the door wearing a bathrobe. And I asked her if Bob was here. And she said, yeah, come on in. She told me to sit down while she gets him. Then she comes out wearing a nightgown or a long t-shirt. So do you think Bobby's so holy now? And I thought he did give up being an alcoholic and told me he poured out all of his alcohol and showed me proof that he didn't have none in the whole apartment. If you think so, just check out the VCR tapes he has. Is Robert coming out? He's busy getting ready to come out, but check this out. <laughs> he must have recorded over this one. What's the next? <laughs> he did it over this one too. Watch this next one. <laughs> Oh, he did it to all three of them. I thought you told me Robert's coming out. And what is he doing here? And when they went to the back room to talk about it, I decided I need to get out of here. I don't want to sound like I'm giving you one of those lines, but it's not really what it seems. Then I told him exactly what happened. And then he said to me, David, I don't blame you. I always knew she cheated on me for some time now. And for both these women cheating, the guy's got a divorce. That Jesus allows is Matthew 5, 31 and 199. That's for cheating. Deuteronomy 24, 4 and 5. You can't remarry the one you divorced. That did somebody else. Because that would be a sin, but you can remarry. And after a long Long time later, that's when we went to the Devil's Woods. Just remember to check those out. To make a long story short, I met Bill by Scott, my roommate, from the apartment. He lived in the trailer with his wife. They was fake Christians to get what they wanted in life. By saying that they was fearing God people even though they didn't believe it anyways. The wife cheated on him to cause a separation and divorce. I stayed with him as long as I wasn't working. After keep witnessing to him by Bible and the Christian radio stations, I told him about the woods and what I didn't know he was thinking he didn't believe it anyways and he told me that night, let's go. So this way he could catch me off guard and prove it wrong. He was also thinking before we got there that he was a white witch, a 
Wiccan, and it was all a bunch of magic tricks, and that's why he stopped believing in anything. Okay, we're here in the middle of the woods, and the only thing I found is this busted up softball. And the only thing I seen was shadows that might look like faces, but I'm gonna try something. Hey, Shane, why don't you come get me? I'm right here. Are you scared of me? <laughs> Did you hear that? It's only the beginning. Nah, I think it's a dog. Look, where does those weird footprints come from? I don't know. Let's follow it. No, if it was a dog, it would have came out barking at us. The track seemed to end here, so let's go to the right where it looks like it's going to. I have an idea, but cover your ears. Why? Because I'm going to say something Christians don't like to hear. Satan, is that all you got, you chicken beep? Did you see that? Yes, did you do something? No, I can't even reach it. Look. You can see the moon is so bright, you can see right through it, and nothing is there. What are you doing? Some kind of sorcery? We quickly left when he seen his floating walking. Cover your ears again. Don't tell me you gotta say something against his word again. Take this, you chicken bee! <laughs> Once we get to my place, I like to do the sinner's prayer. I like to call it the prayer of salvation. Oh, by the way, I wasn't doing sorcery back there. I was trying to look for a fishing line because I thought the whole thing was set up. It wouldn't be me. As a Christian, I wouldn't lie to you because lies are only here to the kingdom of heaven. After that, we witnessed the others with Bible studies. Later on, we met this Baptist named Robert. He was a drunk and a wife beater. After witnessing the truth to him, he humbled himself and changed. Later on, Bill told him about the woods and I tried to convince him we could put an end to that. He said no, but he had a relative that wanted to find out if it was real. Robert's wife went with us. That's what we heard and seen without feeling wind when we ran out of there. The time we ran out of the woods, we kept feeling something running past us without seeing a thing, causing us to run toward the car. We jumped into the car and the car was shaking side to side and then pulling backwards. Then I put in the key. <laughs> It was a different regular party Christian song that made the devil flee. Because the devils hate any praise songs of God. Hey David, you know that girl that got saved in our Bible study? In my new apartment? Oh, you mean Linda that called herself Jean because she don't like her mom. Yeah, why don't we bring her down to woods this night? Only if we go there to get rid of what's happening. Yeah, you was at least waiting for three of us to do this. Like the word God says, there's got to be two or three in his name. And Jesus taught us not to be fools, amen, brother Bill. Amen, my Christian brother, elder in Christ. Wait a minute, I got two way. I'm going to find now if she wants to go. Who is she? It's me and brother Bill. Hi. Yes. About the woods we told you about, you want to go? Sure. I'll meet you outside the front in an hour. David, if you're still there, let's go walking behind the place. So we got time to exercise before she gets there. It sounds like a good plan. We've been walking around for over a half an hour. Now we got to go around the other way to meet with Jean. It would be too late to do that. We have to go through the woods to go get her. Feeling like he did this on purpose, we walked this way. Nothing happened this time. Satan, what's the matter? I'm not living the wrong way for you anymore. I'm living the right way for the Lord. And that's what happened to us when we was waiting for you. So let's go. Wait, we gotta go to the car to get our holy stuff to fight this thing. No, we're gonna go through this with our mouth shut so we can prove our point first. As long as I've been out here, Christian Dave, I experienced trees moving in all different directions. Without wind and after that, I felt something running past me in all directions. It's like what you told me what happened with you and Robert's family. Yeah, I'm feeling it too. Yeah, after this, we need to fight this back. You notice that? That dog is seeing something we're not. Because that dog is normally barking at us no matter what. Yeah, because they got better senses. Now let's go around this so we can get what we need to finally put a stop to this. Oh, David, I think we should keep this around so we can bring people more closer to the Lord Jesus Christ and get to God. Sometimes I think you live for this. No, I was on my way to hell. Now I'm convinced to live for the Lord to go to heaven because of all this. During that night, the light seemed to dim and go out as we was going underneath it. Hey, David, if you didn't drive home, I need you to come here right away. Because a gimme through glass in my arm and it broke all over the place. Now let's find out if the both of us can cast this devil out. I'll be there. Thanks, but my arm still hurts. What was that? It sounded like somebody picked up the phone in my bedroom, but no one's here.
here. Several months later, gee, now my ex-wife because she cheated on me while I was at work. We lived in an apartment. Who was you talking to on the phone with? It was Bill and he agrees with us to put an end to what's going on back there in those woods. But first he wants us to walk with him to get some exercise. And he's got a camera and a tape recorder to get proof. And then we could get rid of it. After getting prayed up and put anointing oil on us and crosses in her shirt in the holy water and the words of God. Plus, I got my camera in my right hand and my left side I got a recorder. <laughs> When I walk through the valley of shadow death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff comfort me. You shall stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand shall save me. What caused you two to act that way to know something's happening? I felt something hot go through my arm. I felt something burning hot like a furnace, like something came right from hell where I was going, went right through me. At least the word of God and the holy water worked, causing the devil's power to weaken. And it finally stopped. Was that noise coming from the power plant? No, the whole fence was shaking. Yeah, and the fence shouldn't shake with all these trees leaning against it. But at least it's over now. So we went back in the woods to make certainly sure it was all gone. Did anybody notice different temperatures when we was running out of this place? Yes. I did too, but in this warm night, it's cool around this area where I spray. Now it feels like a blessing. This is what woke us up later that night. After a quiet night home. I pray to God and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never leave this room. I felt it run past me. You saw the line of the working here. In Jesus' name, leave this area. The next morning. Did you walk past? No. I see someone a white road walk past. Hey, look who's coming in. It finally ended after we blessed the whole apartment. After a few years later, we, plus my daughter and stepdaughter, both told them about the woods. But 30% was gone. We went to the blessed area and nothing happened. Then we went to the other side where there's a little bit left. And this is what happened. And now the woods are mostly gone. In case you was wondering about Bill's picture, it came out pitch black. The tape nobody wanted sounded like this. Help me, David, help me. Help me, David, help me. The one that wanted to write our book said he was going to keep the Christianity out of it. Coming back home from work, I found out she cheated on me. I got mad at her while she was giving me all kinds of stupid excuses for it. Even while we was married, she was packing up to leave to go back to her parents. I said, after all I've done for you, you're just going to abandon me. And I knew we couldn't afford a divorce. And I asked her to confess her sins. Is this the first time you ever cheated on me? And that's when she told me she did. She did it all those other times. Then I said, did you ever lie to me about anything else? And she claimed she did not. And I prayed in Jesus' name that God would reveal the truth to me as I fell asleep. And I dropped this black guy with a long leg of white guy to have their way with her and did and then I woke up I dreamt that you got naughty with this black guy and all these white guys oh. it's all true God really does give you vision in your dreams it happened a long time ago before we met but I never wanted to tell you because see, we wouldn't get married and it happened exactly like you said my brother's friends used to smoke pot with my dad but my dad wasn't around and my brother took his friends and watched my dad's x-rated tapes and that's when they all took advantage of me at first I didn't like it then I got used to it then I started liking it and that tore me up inside because I never wanted to marry a female like that so in other words I married a lie you only told me you had one guy after I was waiting for the right person now I don't blame the church for getting upset with me now this time I'm leaving as this was going on the people upstairs called the law on us you will not leave me and that's why you left your daughter behind, because this way she don't slow you down or stop you from cheating on me. You know they threatened me, they said if I take my daughter I would never see her again. And years later my stepdaughter found out that was a lie because she found papers to send her daughter away to the sinful family, and it was illegally done. She asked who it was, and I said it's obvious it's the police. She said she didn't see anyone out there. So one cop came in and said, none of you are going to be under arrest, we just want to know what's going on. Where cops lies as Christians tell the truth. When the other two cops came in, the other one took her out. And I told him exactly everything that happened. And that's when he grabbed my hand and slapped the cuff on my wrist while he was reading me my rights. I said, for what? I didn't do nothing! When the other cops see me pull my whole arm away so I won't get my other wrist cuffed, they both grabbed me and started forcing me to the ground. I picked them both up. I walked them to the couch to throw them on it. And feeling so betrayed, I was going to have a shootout. And they both start wiggling until I lost my balance and fell down onto the carpet. After his partner got me handcuffed, the other guy dared me to keep resisting arrest because he always wanted to use his pepper spray. And I looked at him like he's some kind of idiot because I'm already handcuffed. And the other guy has his knee on my back. He said, if I don't answer, we're going to consider that I kept on resisting arrest. So you're going to keep resisting arrest? I guess not. And we both went to jail for domestic violence. Plus I had resisting arrest and disrespecting the law. And I don't remember what else. And having a record lost me my security job. 
job. And I thank God the church was around to help us out in the time of crisis. Because they helped me with this temporary job, and after that, the plant vending job. After coming back home, spending that day and night at jail in the year 2000, feeling like my life was over because I was working for a family, not a cheater. So I took some poison. When I was slowly dying, feeling my body getting more numb, I was praying in Jesus' name, God forgive me for this. And I was slowly slipping into death. And I was waking up to the one who started life. God sitting on the throne and Jesus welcomed me with open arms. Meanwhile, when Jean noticed, she dragged me to the bathroom and got me drinking this mineral oil when I was nearly gone. When you don't mix it with water, the stuff could make you puke like I did. Sometime later, when the numbness went away, my body ached. Jean helped me on the bed and left me alone to recover. Once I did, Robert and I went to witness to this female named Lonnie. She used to go to our Bible study. She was also known as Lonnie the Liar. Then we both went to our place of witness to her. We heard rumors about you going around being a follower. When you're with Christians, you're a Christian. When you're with sinners, you're a sinner. And she cussed us out, and that's the last we heard of her. I don't know how many days or a week later but Jean was watching the news and I was in the bathroom and she was screaming I did it sorry I was thinking oh no don't tell me she's here to argue some more it's Lonnie 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 what about Lonnie is she over here no it's about Lonnie what about her she called you or something no she's on the news so what did she do to be on the news she's dead Lonnie's dead she's dead 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 and I knew God was using us to witness to her after I thought that I said how did she die I don't know and this happened in April 19 2003 so they called Robert and I down to the station and questioned us separately. You might as well admit what you and Robert done to Lonnie. If you want circumstances, go easy on you. The last time we seen Lonnie is only to witness to her. Robert said you two was the last to see her. The only thing we wanted to find out which one of you done away with her. None of us did nothing to her. Come on, you can't tell us how you know you both wanted her. If none of you could have her, you would make sure that no one can. And your friend already mentioned the truth to us and we want to find out if your story stays the same. And I was thinking, oh great, I'd probably be the innocent one that winds up in jail because I heard about stories like that. You know you're stalling because you know you and him are guilty. One of you killed her and one of you accomplice. And you don't want to know what he said about you. If he said anything bad about me, I know he's lying. Well, let you two go from now, but don't move anywhere. So how was your interrogation? They told me you confessed to what we did. I told him David's a Christian. He wouldn't lie like that like you. And that's when they let me go and let you in. How was yours? Almost the same, but I said, if he said anything bad about me, I know he's lying. While this was going on, Gene's mom was trying to sue me for child support, saying that I got Jean's mom pregnant when it was Jean's daughter. Then we found out about Lonnie. The ones that caused her death was Lonnie and Jean's family. The ones that had her daughter but gave it to the great-grandparents. After seven more jobs later, after that I found many under table paying jobs. And I jumped that Lonnie went to the Black Fiery Pit. And after I didn't feel the same about Jean keep cheating on me, we got blessed for being friends with the upper class family that helped pay for her divorce. Because she was being abusive to the kids and the DCF took them both away. While I was working my odd jobs, or volunteering their work after she got her kid back from this. Since I wasn't aware of this, it got me on neglect. And they told the two kids that I didn't care about them. And everything I went through in my life, this hurt the worst. And at that time, I knew how God feels when people sin and that separates us from Him. And that's why He wants us to have a relationship with Him. So we could be right for Him. Nine months later, I got them back. And some years later, God gave me a vision that I didn't even pray for. Because God wanted His attention because He loves Him. And to let Him know that it's not too late to get back right with Him unless you die. Because I was seeing myself in Chuck interpreting the wrong he was doing. Then I woke up and had a Christian fellowship with him and told him what God showed me. He said, I know what God's talking about and I appreciate you letting me know. And I will repent, meaning turn away from sin. Then many years later, my stepdaughter was going to this Christian private school. I was only used to the basic cell phones and not the smart ones. And she had one I didn't know nothing about. And I see her doing a certain design to unlock her phone. I woke up and found her phone and did that same design that God visioned to me and found that she was using it for sins. And since there's too many sins on there, I don't trust any electronic device that leads you to that. Unless it's decent parents, mom.